Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts New Cross Nation. And for today's video, we're going to be going over the new Cloud and Sephiroth banner that we are getting today. <laughs> now it's funny because I literally just posted like a few hours ago my sneak peek video talking about whether or not it's worth getting them and such. And kind of like I assumed it would, it, the banner ended up being the exact same thing as what JP got. It just has a different artwork compared to the JP version. And just like in the JP version of the game, Prime Kingdom Hearts Cloud is a 5 mercy pull. However, the new Supernova Sephiroth is not. Okay, He is a complete non-mercy medal. So no matter how many times you pull, you're not guaranteed to get the medal. Now, usually in these videos, I will explain what exactly the medals do. But considering I literally just did that a few hours ago... I'm not going to do that this time. On top of the fact, I'm hoping that you are able to read and can read the descriptions yourselves in game uh, in the notices. So uh, just for this, just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to explain what their abilities are this time. I'm just going to assume you already know what they do. Uh, but in a nutshell, Prime Kingdom Hearts Cloud is basically just a power version of the Riku versus Roxas metal and the new Supernova Sephiroth is basically just a power reverse version of the Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX plus uh, metal that we got not so long ago as well. Uh, the only difference being that the Supernova Sephiroth has a new mechanic well, called Supernova. Now to kind of go into a little bit more detail uh, compared to my last video into how actually Supernova works. In case you're not aware, Supernova is basically, well, just like another version of Nova that we currently have in game. Um, the main difference being though, is that you can actually use Supernova abilities multiple times compared to the just once version of regular Nova. Every metal that you have in your setup that has Supernova attached is capable of using Supernova separately. And the way that damage is calculated is actually based off the strength stat of the metal uh, that has the Supernova ability, as well as the fact that it's actually somewhat dependent on the slots that the metal is equipped to as well. So the higher the multiplier of the slot that it's equipped to, the higher the damage the Supernova will do as well. So to give a rough example, if we have a level 35 Dark Gnaw, for example, and we have this Supernova Sephiroth here, okay, he will actually do more damage in slot 5 than he would in slot 3 just because of the fact that the slot multipliers are different. Slot 3 has a lower slope slot multiplier whereas slot 5 has a higher slot multiplier. Just like I mentioned before you can use supernova for every single metal attached to your keyblade that has the supernova ability. So in, let's say for example you happen to have six Sephiroths on your Keyblade, you can literally use the Supernova six times, one for each metal on your Keyblade. Although, please keep in mind that you can only use the Supernova ability one time per quest, just like regular Nova. Uh, it does affect counters, just like regular Nova. It does not count as a special ability cast. Uh, on top of the fact that it also deals more damage, it gets stronger, just like regular Nova, the more buffs and debuffs that you have applied on both you and your opponent. And now in terms of whether or not you should pull from this banner, my advice for this banner is going to be essentially the same exact thing as it, how it's always been for all previous prime metal banners, which is that you only want to pull once from the banner to guarantee your your six star copy of the prime Kingdom Hearts cloud metal and then you can essentially skip the rest of the banner. Okay. Now I know a lot of people's main concern is whether or not uh, they should go for the Sephiroth metal. To be honest, Sephiroth isn't really that big of a deal. Okay. Realistically, I don't even find him that great of a metal because, like I said before, he's basically just a power reverse version of the Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX Plus model that we just got not so long ago, and he is not necessary at all whatsoever. And the same thing is going to be applied to Sephiroth. Now, of course, the Supernova mechanic is super busted, but it's only super busted for now, literally only because of the fact that he is the only metal in the game right now that has the mechanic. However, that's generally how they do things within the game is that they typically like to introduce Sephiroth medals as like the introductory metal towards new mechanics and abilities and such. Okay, that's typically how they do things now these days. And it's super highly unlikely that they're just going to like release this one medal and they just like never release a medal with Supernova anymore. That doesn't make any sense to introduce a new mechanic like that. 
uh, that actually has a button and everything that isn't going to be applied to more metal. Like that doesn't make sense. Um, so there's definitely going to be more metals in the future that will have this ability. And in my eyes, you're much better off saving your jewels and waiting for more busted metals in the future whose abilities or multipliers are actually significant, along with the fact that they have supernova and chase for those metals instead. Those are gonna be the game-changing metals or game-breaking metals, one of the two, okay? Because as of right now, Sephiroth Supernova Sephiroth, he's he's good, but only because of his supernova, not because of his multipliers or his abilities, although they are pretty good and decent as well. But his abilities and multipliers are not meta, which is the point, okay? It's only his supernova ability. Now, real quick, before I end this video, I want to talk about real quick. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion online and within the community about people kind of speculating that this metal is going to be absolutely required for PvP. And I'm here to tell you like, no, <laughs> this is not the case at all whatsoever, okay? Uh, yeah, the metal will help you out. It will be, uh, it'll definitely be one of your hardest hitting metals for a little bit of time. But the reality is, if you don't already have a busted setup or setups to use within PVP, chances are that Sephiroth is not going to help drastically put you in the top rankings all of a sudden. Sure, he'll help you get there or, you know, help you get to higher tiers than you usually go to as of right now, but he's not going to just drastically shoot you to the top or anything. Okay? And that's the kind of misconception I feel like people are kind of having as of right now. They think that Sephiroth are just going to automatically place him in like top 100, top 500 or something like that. And I just want to let you guys know that this, this is only going to happen if you're already a top player, okay? Because realistically, even if you get a new medal, if you have this new Sephiroth medal and you face off against a top player, but you're not a top player yourself, chances are the top player is still going to beat you. A lot of people think that the Sephiroth medal is going to be all over the place in the top rankings and such uh, for PvP. And I, I just want to like kind of illustrate to you guys real quick just how unlikely this is actually going to be now if any of you remember from the whole survey that we did not too long ago uh glacy actually mentioned within the stream that about sixty thousand players actually responded to the in-game survey uh and this is not including the number of players who didn't respond to the survey either okay i have no idea how many players didn't respond to the survey so for the sake of this argument i'm just going to use the 60,000 players as kind of like the benchmark so real quick i want to show you guys just how unrealistic it is that pvp is going to be flooded with sephiroth medals okay so because of the fact that sephiroth is a non-mercy pool on top of the fact he has low drop rates we're going to say he's going to have about a 0.0625 percent drop rate because that's usually rough around the standard drop rate for uh, high quality metals like this. If we take the 60,000 players and we multiply that and by the drop rate percentage of 0.0625%, we will roughly get about 38 people, okay? So this means that if all 60,000 players only pull once from this banner, only about roughly, more or less, uh, 38 people will actually pull the banner most likely, okay? Um, but again, that's only if everyone pulls once, which is unlikely on the low end, okay? Now let's say that all 60,000 players actually pull five times, all five times to Mercy Cloud instead, okay? This is also unlikely, but this is more on the high end of the unlikely spectrum. Um, even with that odds, let's say everybody pulls five times, only about 190 players, more or less, will actually pull the Sephiroth medal. And this is out of 60,000 players players now granted of course this is just purely to help illustrate things to you guys uh, i'm not expecting only 190 players to like pull the, to get the medal or anything of course um but i'm just trying to illustrate to you guys how like how unlikely it is that players are actually gonna get this medal because of the fact it has a low drop rate and it's a non-mercy pool now to further illustrate my point exactly how many of those 190 players for example are already going to be top tier players, okay? Because realistically, 190 players is already a super low amount out of the 60,000 players that pull for from the banner <laughs> already, okay? And I'm willing to bet that out of those 190 players, only about maybe like a smaller percentage of that are even gonna be top tier players in the first place for it to even be worth having it 
in the top rankings, okay? This is just the very nature of how things are gonna go uh, with banners like this in the first place. And it's why I'm such a hard advocate against just not even bothering with non-mercy pulls in the first place. Just because the, the like, the, the chance of you actually get in the medal is just so low that it's not even worth doing. Uh, both in an emotional sense and on a, you know, jewel sense and, you know, wallet sense. It, they're just not worth chasing after no matter how busted they are. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to quickly iterate this point to you because because it, it really kind of grinds my gears a little bit. <laughs> uh, when I constantly see people saying, like, how he's going to be absolutely required or, like, you know, game-changing within PvP and stuff like that. Like, you, you have to have them or you're just, you're just not going to do well. I, I, it just bothers me when people say that because realistically, it's not that likely or true. But yeah, just a quick recap, just pull once to guarantee your 6-star version of Cloud, and then you can just skip the banner and move on. Uh, but other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like and subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.